All right, so this is the Alienware M15 R3. It's the new one for 2020. And when they first announced this, I kind of dismissed it. I didn't think it was like a big refresh. It looks so similar to last year's model. I just kind of went under the radar for me. Uh, but having gotten it in, I realized there's a lot of stuff that they've changed under the hood and we'll talk about them. Now, my story with last year's model, the R2, this was a device that I thought was a pretty good performer, very thin for an Alienware device, very pretty, but I felt like thermally this wasn't the best thing out there, right? I felt like it wasn't super competitive in terms of just best performance, unless you tweaked it and, you know, undervolted it and repasted it and stuff, and stuff that's more advanced. So I just never really recommended this thing openly from last year's model. It did look really good though. They've addressed a lot of stuff this year. Uh, let's start off with the exterior. This wasn't a problem with last year's model, but they've actually changed it. This is now a smooth, like hard finish. Last year's model had like a soft touch finish to it. I really like this material, but my impression was that this was something that could get dirty easily. Like if you had, I don't know, Cheetos covered fingers, or if you had dirty fingers and you handled a white laptop with a soft touch finish, it would invariably smudge or just stain this material. This feels much more stain and smudge resistant, uh, but it's not as inviting to use. Like the, the top deck as well, like the keyboard area, and the top surface and the bottom panel are all refinished. They're no longer soft touch, but it still looks really good. Now, another thing they've changed this year is the trim around the panel. So it's gonna be hard to see in this shot. I'll do some pickups, but you can see that they've added this rubber trim around the edge of the screen. I think it serves two purposes. One is that when you open and close the device, it's a bit just, you know, it's there, there's less of an impact when you close the lid. It's more of like a softer close versus the old one. It's more of like a, it's more of like a louder snap versus Right? It's subtle, but there is a difference. Uh, but secondly, I also think that it serves to reinforce the actual bezel around the screen. So on last year's model, the trim or the bezel, if you pushed it, you could kind of see it wobbling around a bit. There wasn't a ton of play, but it was noticeable. But this year is just a sturdier trim. It's just everything seems to be adhered a little bit tighter. But the bezel itself is still made with that shiny or glossy plastic, which I don't personally love. Now, another thing I noticed is that the screen is easier to open with one hand. Not everyone cares about this stuff, but for the people that do, I think they tweaked the hinge tension just a little bit so that you can do this if you care for it. Okay, another thing they've changed this year is the speaker setup. So last year's models, the R2s, they had bottom firing speakers only. They would just blast out from the bottom of the laptop and hit the surface of whatever you were using it on. This year, they still have bottom firing speakers as like the main, but they also have these front firing ones that point towards the user of the device. And this is kind of more traditional in terms of Alienware, like all of their older laptops used to have these front firing speakers, and this is more akin to that. Here's my take on them though. They sound better than the R2s, but they don't sound amazing. Like they certainly don't sound as good as let's say like MacBook speakers. Like that's really the gold standard. And it's good that they've improved it, but if I had to like rate these numerically, let's say five is an average gaming laptop speaker, right? That's mathematically the average, right? In the middle of zero and 10, five. I would consider the R2s like six, maybe six and a half. These are like a seven and a half. There's still a lot of room that they could improve on. But when it comes to positional audio, these do a pretty good job. Like because the front firing speakers are like the higher frequencies, you can hear like gunshots and sounds like footsteps and pickups, any kind of in-game sound that's used to identify where enemies are or where your teammates are, they come out pretty cleanly from these front firing speakers, which the old ones did not. So if you're someone that doesn't use headphones to play games, these are better. Okay, let's talk about thermal performance or just performance in general. That was the thing that I did not like about the R2. Good, but not great. This year, it's better, but it's still not perfect. So, uh, okay, let's talk about the hardware improvements. They've added a vapor chamber for the CPU, but only the CPU. The GPU still has a regular heat pipe system. Now, the removal of heat on a system like the Alienware M15s has always been a difficult thing for for the company because Alienware is a company that really takes pride in their ability to bring out like the fastest performing devices, right? They want to clock their stuff as high as possible. They don't really care too much about temperatures 
And it's something that's difficult for a reviewer like myself to convey to you guys, right? So here's the thing. There are companies out there, uh, let's say Razer. They're a company that purposely lowers their clock speed on their devices. I'm not talking about throttling. They will make their systems run just a little bit slower to keep their system cool all the time. Alienware is not like that. They like to run their stuff as fast as possible, but stuff gets hotter because they're just pumping more water to the CPU. And when you have a device like this that's thin and they're trying to make it look a certain way and they're trying to keep these things running as fast as possible, they're really hard to cool properly. The R3 is noticeably cooler running than last year's R2, for sure, but you still need to undervolt it to get the best possible thermal performance. And that's something I wish Alienware would do right out of the factory, just like undervolt these things by a little bit and then your consumer base would just probably stop complaining about thermal issues. But yeah, it's good, improved from last year, but it's still just shy from what I would consider to be a perfect thermal system on this device. Okay, uh, the fan noise, unchanged. It still gets pretty loud at the top end, but I think for the average user, it's a perfectly acceptable fan profile. The screens come in a few options. This one's the 1080p 300 hertz panel, very fast and showcases the hardware nicely. Games play fluidly on it. I do wish it was a little bit brighter, but there is a 4K panel option if you need something that's a little more color accurate and a screen that's brighter. Now inside, they've also changed a few other things. Last year's model could not take more than 16 gigs of RAM. Like regardless of how you configured it, 16 was the max and it's soldered on RAM, right? So you can't ever upgrade it. This year they've allowed up to 32 gigs of RAM, which is awesome. They've also changed the whole motherboard layout. It looks a little bit different. It's still a flipped motherboard though. So if you want to repaste it or do anything that's more complex, it's a, it's a more difficult disassembly. There's three SSD slots. Two of them are like the big boy normal ones. And then there's like a small one for people that want a third NVMe drive if they need it. And the battery has been upgraded this year. It's now an 86 watt hour block. It's a pretty decent size, but I was only getting four and a half hours on this thing. I thought I'd be able to hit five pretty easily, but four and a half hours. Uh, ports. So the ports remain unchanged. There is a micro SD slot though this year, if that's something you're into. Why was I pointing it like that? You can't even see that. Micro SD. Okay, uh, let's talk about the things that haven't changed. So like I said right from the beginning, this is, in my opinion, one of the best designs I've seen for a laptop. It's such a unique look. Like there's so much going on, but at the same time it looks simple enough. Like you can obviously turn off the lights and just keep it relatively muted. But if you want to, you can just turn them on and flex on all those other laptop users that aren't on your level. But I do think that this is such a cool looking device. And I really think this is going to be the, at least one of the main reasons why you would consider the M15s. Uh, another feature I really like on these devices is their keyboard. I think I've mentioned in the past, but this has got to be one of my personal favorite gaming laptop keyboards. Everything about it, the layout, the typing mechanism, the lighting, they do everything right on this thing. Uh, obviously you get some crazy Alienware lighting if you want, but the gaming and typing experience on this keyboard is on point. Uh, the trackpad is glass. They got a really nice texture on it. It is a pretty loud click, like it's very audible. So if you're in a work environment that doesn't allow you to click, you're gonna have to either tap or get a completely different device. But yeah, I like the trackpad. But the overall device is much better this year. I feel like the R2, last year's model was it was a nice device, but it was really reserved for people that were focused on like the aesthetic of it. This year, it still looks really nice, but I feel like it's more competitive, like the thermal performance. And I think the pricing is fair for what you're getting this year. I will say like the one takeaway for me is that they got to start using AMD stuff in here. I feel like if they stuck an AMD chip inside here, the temperature problems would, wouldn't be a thing. This would just be a cooler running machine because AMD's Ryzen chips are just, they're lower wattage. And you just, it would solve a lot of stuff, I feel, especially for the enthusiast level. Okay, so that's the Alienware M15 R3. It's a much better pickup this year than it was last year. Uh, and there you have it. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. See you guys next time.